Tonight, a heartbreaking story and a big question to our government. What has taken you so long? Why do I ask? Because hundreds of thousands of people did what you do every day. They drank tap water in their homes. But here's the difference from you. Years later, those people I just mentioned are now not only sick from the tap water, but they are dying from it. Many of these people alerted our government asking, maybe even begging for help. And today, nearly a year after a law was passed to help them, nothing. How could that happen here in the United States of America? This is their story. Jacksonville, North Carolina, home to the military training facility Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune. In 1982, 40 years after the camp was built, specific volatile organic compounds were discovered in the camp's drinking water. Those are human-made chemicals. They are found in thousands of everyday products. You may have them in your own home, including cleaning supplies, paint products, degreasers, and pesticides. According to the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, a federal public health agency of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Camp Lejeune's water contamination came from the following sources. ABC Cleaners, an off-base dry clean firm, leaking underground storage tanks, industrial area spills, and waste disposal sites. Three of the eight water treatment plants on Camp Lejeune were affected. People at the base were drinking water with solvent levels 280 times higher than what is considered to be safe. And what happened? Just what you think. People got sick, very sick. On the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs website, the VA, it lists 15 covered health conditions related to Camp Lejeune's water contamination. The list includes leukemia, lung cancer, breast cancer, female infertility, and not Hodgkin's lymphoma. On August 10, 2022, President Joe Biden signed into law the Camp Lejeune Justice Act. It is a provision of the Honoring Our Pact Act of 2022. This provision allows any individual present at Camp Lejeune to seek compensation for the resulting medical conditions. The person must have been on the base for at least 30 days between August 1st, 1953 and December 31st, 1987. There's another limitation. Individuals have only two years to make a claim. If their claim is not successful, the Camp Lejeune Justice Act allows individuals to file lawsuits against the U.S. government, and the U.S. government cannot block those lawsuits claiming government sovereign immunity. It's been nearly a year since President Biden signed this bill into law. And who has received justice since then? Well, so far, no one. Why? The Department of the Navy spokesperson in part says, quote, the Navy has received approximately 70,000 Camp Lejeune Justice Act claims, CLJA, to date. They go on to say, quote, our personnel began processing claims as soon as the first claim was filed with the Navy. To date, no CLJA claims have reached final disposition. The Navy cited a, quote, complex claims process that requires collaboration across multiple federal agencies and paperwork that can date back 40 years. But here is the harsh reality. Some of these applicants can't wait. They don't have time. They are dying. Is this really the best our government can do? Or is this our government turning its back on those who volunteered to protect us? San Diego, California lawyer Andrew Van Arsdale, who has filed claims on behalf of claimants, joins me. Nice to see you, sir. Telling this important story. Um, it's a very important story, and thank you for bringing it to us. Um, is, is the Navy doing all it can? Because the clock is running both on the statute to file a claim as well as a lot of them are dying. Greta, I mean, you and I believe in this country. We believe what it's capable of. And to answer your question, no, the Navy is not doing enough. I mean, we're the most powerful nation in the world, maybe in the history of the world. And they can't take care of these men and women that President Biden came out and said we're going to take care of, that our Congress came out and said, we're sorry this happened. Here's the Camp Lejeune Justice Act, that the executive branch of our government needs to step in and start doing more to take care of these men and women who are literally dying right now. You know, the, the cruelty of Congress passing and the president signing a law that, that we can't comply with in, for these veterans is just terrible. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know what, if it's a man, if they need manpower, I don't know what it is. But to tell these people last August, essentially, we're really sorry. 
you know, you're dying because of what happened, but we're going to compensate you. But you've got this small window, and oh, we're, it's too overwhelming, we can't do it. Then why did you pass the law in the first place? That's right. President Biden comes out and says, look, this is the most important piece of legislation that may have ever been passed to honor the members of our armed services and their families that have suffered so much. Here we are, almost How a year later. How are they being honored? And, and putting them through this process and, all over and, again? About how many people are in this universe of people who probably have valid claims? Up to a million people were exposed to this toxic water at Camp Lejeune. And you said it in your opening. If they were there for 30 days during that time period, the water was so toxic that they're likely very sick today if they're still even living now. Is there any contest about causation from this water? I mean, I, there's a whole list of cancers that I, that I see that are covered, but is there any question we know that, well, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, or is this, you know, this, cause, this, this causes these problems? We're looking at studies from the ATSDR, right? This is the government's own agency that studied the water at this base that made the connection between the water and the injury. Yeah, you know, the Navy has the medical records through the VA. They have the service records through their, through their time in service. I mean, it's not a question of what if they were there or if they were sick. They already have these records. It should not be this complicated. It should not be taking this long. Andrew Van Arsdale, thank you. And I hope the I hope someone from the Navy or the government is watching this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greta. And a cancer patient whose family did live at Camp Lejeune and who now herself has a terminal diagnosis, Jody Godovic, joins me. Nice to see you, Jody. See you, Greta. Thank you for getting the story out. Well, I wish I could do more than just get the story out. I wish I could get it done for you, um, all of you. Tell me, tell me, Jody, um, you're not the only family member with cancer, is that right, who was at the Camp I Lejeune? I am not. My mom and my dad both have bladder cancer, and my mom also has kidney cancer. And and what what is your what's your condition? I, I you know I hate to be so cold to ask you that, but I mean it sounds like such a cold way to say it. But how are you? I am chemo treatments every week. Uh, I'm terminal. They're just trying to keep me alive at this point right now. My tumors are growing, um, and I'm taking one day at a time. But they gave me a year and a half to live. How how long how um, how how much, you know, how, when did you learn that you could make this claim? Um, well, my, my mother got cancer first. We found out about the Camp Lejeune Act, and she made the claim. And then I got diagnosed, and uh, I made the claim. But I am administratively accepted into the Camp Lejeune program, but they are fighting me, saying that I am clinically not eligible. So, and your parents both are administ they're administratively entered into this pool as well, right? It's the three of you? Right. Yes, and they're clean. And, they and are so, so they say that you meet all the qualifications. You were long enough at Camp Lejeune. You have the cancer, but now they're saying that, you, they're, that they're fighting you on this? Yes, clinically, to cover me health care-wise. Uh, they said I would, they diagnosed me with something that I don't even have. So I had to appeal the VA, the government, and uh, the last time I heard from them was February 21st from the appeal that they had to go back to the original jurisdiction, and I still have not heard another word. I don't have time to wait. Um, and, and what does, uh, it, who, who's your lawyer on this? Andrew. Okay, that's what you know, I, I knew that. I, I wanted the viewers to know. A Andrew has told me that uh, you can't get the government even to move on this stuff to respond to this. You say that you haven't heard since February. The clock is is running. It's like, you know, I don't even know what to say to you about the yeah, government it, handling of this. It's actually, it's, it's horrible. It's like they don't want to take care of the American citizens. They're worried about taking care of everybody else but us. And I'm fighting for my life because you poisoned me. You knew you were poisoning those people, those men, and most of those men were drafted. They didn't have a choice back then, or they went to jail. And now they're dying because of it, and so are their family members. You know, it's inconceivable. From, from 1953 to 1987, all this poisoned water there, people were drinking, and no one had the good sense to know that maybe there was a problem. There must have, there must have been people getting sick within that window, you know, a cluster of people getting sick. I mean, you would think so, but like I said, back then, 
uh, my mom had told me, like, my dad, the servicemen only got paid $180 a month. That was their pay. So they could, didn't have money to do anything. All they did was cook and have iced tea parties. That was their big thing. You saw the little silver bullet trailers that they lived in. They didn't have money to do anything else. And, of course, the, the iced tea reference is the fact that that's what the water they were drinking, among other. Jody, um, you know, I, I don't even know what to say to you. You know, um, I, I hope that, you know, in your, in your pain and turmoil that you're going to help a lot of other people. Thank you so much, Greta.